डोंट एक्सपेक्ट दैट द मार्क्स विल ऑलवेज ऑलवेज बी जस्टिफाइबल फ्रॉम योर परस्पेक्टिव समटाइम्स अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी कैरिंग लेस मार्क्स समटाइम एन ईजी क्वेश्चन विल बी कैरिंग मोर मार्क्स मार्क्स विल बी डिडक्टेड फॉर एक्यूरेसी वेन यू आर शोइंग अ रॉन्ग स्टेप फॉलो थ्रू मार्क्स एरर कैरी फॉरवर्ड विल ओनली एक्ट प्रोवाइडेड you're working to a certain level p3 is not about using a calculator unless and until you are showing every single step you won't be able to get the answer so now let's focus on p3 p3 is considered to be the most difficult of all the components that people give in a levels if we compare p3 with p1 definitely it's twice as difficult the working the concepts the amount of working that needs to be shown so p3 is definitely p3 it's the top of the line now when we look at the uh, paper of p3 so this is a february march paper 2020 and the objective is skimming over the paper making you realize what are the things that you need to do in order to ensure that you get your desired grade so uh let's get started first of all this is for 1 hour 50 minutes the formula booklet is there what's in the formula booklet in the formula booklet there are formulas related with circular measure and trigonometry and differentiation and integration and so on so these are the main things that's in the formula booklet now let me highlight few important things that needs to be focused upon first of all answer all question uh this is very obvious but uh, why is the examiner writing it because that's the way that's the only way to get the maximum marks i uh, use a black or dark blue pen people complain that uh, they have written in pencil will the examiner check it definitely not so get over the habit of first scribbling in pencil and then writing on top of it i mean that is something that is very uh difficult for the examiner to read so even if you use an eraser and then you erase the thing well this was all pen so it all got erased but the pencil one will get erased and the pen one will remain but that will be a little bit difficult for the examiner to understand so make sure you don't do this you may use an hp pencil for any diagrams or graphs they use me but i would say that it's better that you use a pencil because you don't want to make mistakes with the diagram because the space is limited now again it says that write your answer to each question in the space provided now the space is there and it all depends on how you utilize it so if you are doing trial and error then uh, definitely you'll be running out of space so make sure that you think first and then you write and you write precisely you show all necessary working that's also uh, shown over here that's also written over here you must show all necessary working clearly whether it's about quadratics whether it's about simultaneous equation whether it's about differentiation integration it's about a differential equation uh maybe it's about a numerical solution of equation maybe it's about a proof so show all necessary working and we will go over this paper and you will see what is the necessary working that i have shown so in short i can say do not assume anything if you want to get a very nice grade do not assume anything show all the necessary working to the examiner and then it's talking about additional space is needed you should use the lined page at the end of the booklet the question number or numbers must be clearly shown uh you should use a calculator where appropriate now lot of time the examiner is asking us to give the answer in the exact form maybe it could be in terms of the third form the radical form it could be in terms of pi it could be in terms of e it could be in terms of ln these are the four main ways in which the examiner is asking to give the answer in the exact form definitely fractions are always there uh and what else is related to this give non exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures or one decimal place for angle in degrees that means 
If the answer for a particular angle is something like this, let's say sine theta is 3 over 5 and you are calculating the basic angle and this is coming out to be 36.86 degrees. So you should work in two decimal places so that the final answer should be given correct to one decimal place. So always work in a level of accuracy more. So level of accuracy, whatever is required, the working level of accuracy should be one level up, one notch up. Three significant figures, work in 4SF. One decimal place, work in 2DP. Unless what? Unless a different level of accuracy is specified in the question. Maybe they are asking us to give the answer correct to the nearest integer. So give the answer correct to nearest an integer because it says so on the top of the page. That's the top. Uh, if they are asking us to give the answer correct to the nearest integer, we will give the answer correct to the nearest integer because that is part of the instruction that's written over here. And definitely the total mark is 75 and the timing is 1 hour 50 minutes. So now uh, let's look at the first question. And as you can see, the first question is about modulus. They're asking us to draw a graph. They're asking us to solve an inequality. Sketch the graph of this. So this is the line that I have drawn, the detailed lecture you can see in the recorded lecture on Alt Academy. Uh, make sure that once you are, uh, make sure that once you are attempting the paper, you have gone over every single lecture, the bite-sized lecture, which makes sure that your concept is very, very crystal clear. Go over that and then try the past papers and then look at the recording. So that uh, steps must be followed. So this was the original equation that is y is equal to x minus 2 without the modulus. And what happens with the modulus? The negative part is reflected in the x-axis, the zero remains as zero. So we get a v-shaped graph. And then it says solve the inequality such and such. So now uh, some people they ask this question that is it necessary to use the graph to solve this inequality? The answer is no. I personally prefer this concept that there are three cases. Modulus on the left hand side, that's of this format. You open it up this way and then you solve it out. And then you uh, look at this inequality. They both are traveling in the same direction. You apply, apply the true and false test and that's how you get this answer. The second question that is about logs. This is for four mark. And by the way, the previous question was for three mark for this paper, only one mark for the uh, drawing the graph. Now, a lot of time don't expect that uh, the marks will always, always be justifiable uh, from your perspective. Sometimes a difficult question will be carrying less marks. Sometimes an easy question will be carrying more marks. Usually it's justifiable, but that's not always the case. So yes, look for the marks, but don't overthink about it. Now, when we look at this question, that is about logs and it's saying, give your answer in a simplified exact form. So now LN3, and this is ln 2x plus 5, and this is ln x plus 2 whole square. This 2 becomes the power of this. There are two ln terms. There is a positive sign. You apply the rule. These two multiply. And this ln and this ln disappears. Why? Because log m base a, if it equals to log n base a, therefore m is equals to n. And then when you solve this thing, this whole thing is coming out to be in the third form. And that's the answer for this part. And this is for four mark. Now look at the steps. This step is about simplification. This step is about quadratics. That means knowledge of P1 is assumed. So you cannot say that I have done P1. Will it of be any use to me? Yes, it's definitely very, very useful for P3. And that's how this thing is done. Uh, look at this question. This is about numerical solution of equations. By sketching a suitable pair of graphs, show that the equation is exactly one root in this interval. So you draw this thing, that is sec x. Make sure you stay within this range. Now, 0 is inclusive, but pi by 2 is not. That is why this line is dotted. The examiner will not be looking for an artwork. The examiner will be looking for whether you have read the instructions properly or not. Now, for example, if someone has drawn it solid, 
that means that mark will be deducted. Marks will be deducted for accuracy. Marks will be deducted when you are showing a wrong step. Follow through marks, error carry forward will only act provided you're working to a certain level is all good, all clear. And uh, this is for two mark. So one mark for this, one mark for the straight line. And naturally, there is one point of intersection. Verify by calculation root lies between such and such. Make sure all the terms are on one side. Right hand side is zero. Make sure your calculator is in the radial mode. So when we talk about radians, in trigonometry, you have the degree mode and you have the radial mode. But when we talk about numerical solution of equations, we are talking about differential equations, we are talking about integration. Differential, by the way, is an extension of integration. And when we are talking about differentiation, maxima, minima, gradient, implicit, parametric, everything related to that, in all these chapters, whenever we are dealing with trigonometry, make sure it's in radians and the calculator should be in the radian mode. So these are some of the things that you should be very, very crystal clear about. And then it's about using the iterative formula. Uh, give result of each iteration correct to four decimal places. So this is four decimal place, four decimal place, four decimal place. And then you round it off to the level of accuracy that is required. And that's how the final answer is coming out to be. That is 0 0.88. That is the answer. Now this one, integration. The pinnacle of uh, P3 is integration and integration is linked with differentiation integration is linked with differential equation so first of all you have to decide which technique of integration will be used so that is something very very necessary unless and until you are clear you are unclear now integration is the pinnacle of p3 that is uh, something that is related with differentiation. That is something that is related with differential equation. There are a lot of techniques of integration that is applicable in P3. In P1, that was too simple. In P3, there is a whole spectrum. So unless and until you are not clear about which technique will be used, how do you think you'll be able to ace that paper? That means your basic concept of each and every technique of integration should be superb. Only then will you be able to solve this paper and you need a lot of stamina. Lot of steps is involved. Just look at this working. I mean, you cannot slack during this working. It's all in exact form. It's all filled up with pies and it's all filled up with ln and everything like that. And that is what P3 is all about. P3 is not about using a calculator. It's not a multiple choice paper. It is about showing the steps unless and until you are showing every single step, unless and until you are following uh, the rules to the extreme detail, you won't be able to get the answer. Now look at this, root three, that is exact. Pi, that is exact. Fraction, that is exact. Ln three, that is exact. So this whole thing is exact in a simplified exact form. So there are people who think that if they buy a calculator and they can punch keys on the calculator, they're all set for the exam. Well, that's a very big uh, mistake that they're committing. Calculator is only a small part of the whole process. Calculator is a tool. You have to apply all the steps. You have to show all the necessary working in order to arrive at the right answer. Now, this is for seven mark. I mean, just look at this. And all this thing will earn you seven marks out of 75 so every single mark is worth it and this question this is about proving an identity and then equation again what do you have you have the addition formula you have the double angle formula you have the compound angle formula which is also known as the harmonic form so you have to decide for yourself that which technique is applicable now over here if someone just cancels off the x which someone should not do but there are people, there is permutation combination, people make a lot of mistakes, so don't do that. This goes with this, this goes with this, and once you have written it, then you realize this is like cosine A, cosine B, plus sine A, sine B. So this is the expanded form of this, so compress it. So this is A, this is B, cosine bracket 3x minus x, which is cosine 2x. Sine x cosine x is half sine 2x. And that's how you solve this. Now, this is four mark. But look over here. The steps are not that much. Because sometimes the thinking is too much. The steps are lesser. 
sometimes the thinking the background the concept is lesser but the working is more so it is a balance between hard work and hard thinking and then uh, solving this equation showing all the steps that you have learned in p1 the quadrants the modification of range the calculation of basic angle arriving at the final answer taking care of the accuracy and so on and then differential equation our differential equation is about variable separably the dy goes with the y the dx goes with the x and then again it's about integration so differential equation may be a little bit of word problem sometimes uh, you have to formulate an equation but most of the time the differential equation is there by the way this is the differential the gradient function is the differential and then you separate it out and then you integrate and then you integrate and then you care take care of the constant of integration again look at the working it is so much filled up with ease now in the previous working that you just saw that was about ln that was about pi that was about square root and this is all about e and look at the amount of space that's a lot of space also something to do with infinity remember that that is 0 divided by any number is 0 any number divided by 0 is undefined similarly any number divided by undefined is 0 so this basic knowledge comes a lot and now you have to realize yes this is differentiation but which part of differentiation this is implicit what is implicit differentiate both sides with respect to x if it's an x term things are normal if it's a y term then you have to write dy by dx in it because eventually you will make this dy by dx the subject of the equation and also one more thing they could have either shown that what il, the answer will be or they could have asked express dy by dx in terms of x and y that means it's an implicit thing and then this is about tangent is parallel to y axis tangent parallel to y axis gradient is undefined numerator over denominator is undefined what makes a fraction undefined when the denominator is zero so now this a nitty gritty detail that should be on your fingertips you cannot expect that you'll be thinking about it while doing the paper i mean that will mess up the paper big time so now this is about vectors a 3d box is there a rectangular cuboid kind of thing is there following the arrows uh, making sure that you're going in the right direction shortest possible route that is what you have to take a uh, vector equation for a line through m and n you write down the equation just like y is equals to mx plus c and then you work it out and uh, the position vector of p from the foot of the perpendicular from d to this line again all these steps should be shown so now there are four steps that i've shown over here partial fraction with binomial decide on the case but even before that decides whether it's a proper fraction or not so the case comes later the decision whether it's proper or improper it comes first and the rest of the working is not that difficult it is lengthy but not that difficult now also this approach that sometimes if you are not very comfortable with a particular uh, topic and you think that it will be consuming a lot of time that like some people they consider a binomial to be consuming a lot of time so just do the setup and once the setup is done you can come back to it later and then complete the stuff people ask this question can we do any question first usually uh, it's better to go with the flow it's better to uh, do the questions as they come because that's an order of difficulty yes once in a blue moon if you see that the part will be consuming too much time you can leave that part and come back to it later and then there is this famous chapter that is complex number and uh, there is the algebraic part there is the trigonometric part there is loci in it there is drawing in it what makes complex so complex is that it basically covers every single chapter of uh, o level maths every single major chapter something like trigonometry or geometry or loci or coordinate geometry and things like that and algebra definitely and uh, just look at the working i mean again i'm showing every single uh, step i'm not assuming anything and over here if the examiner is asking me to draw this so make sure that it is in the standard form the gold standard just like y is equals to mx plus c is the gold standard just like y is equals to ax minus h whole square plus k that is for completed square form so for each loci there is a certain standard that needs to be filled 
Now, if you are solving for a certain angle or something like that, it's not necessary that you show all the working at that particular point. Yes, you have the liberty, you have the space, take that diagram out, show the basic working on the side lines and then work it out. I mean, that is very, very intelligent thing to do. And then this is that additional page that you have. If you use the following line page to complete answer, answers to any question, questions. So the question number or numbers must be clearly shown. So this is one page that's given over here. And then definitely that's the mark scheme that's given over there. So in the end, I would like to say something about P3 is that P3 is difficult but it's not impossible. Every single year, a lot of people, they give P3 and they score wonderful marks. What is their strategy? They have practiced enough. They have practiced topical past papers to a certain extent. And after that, they have solved like two years, three years of uh, yearly past papers because uh, the exam that will come, that won't specifically say that this is a question related to differential equation or this is a question related to integration and things like that. So that will be a yearly paper. So make sure that at least uh, two years paper and every single variant in it, there are six variants of P3, one of March, three of June, two of November, that's six papers in a year, at least two years, maximum three, four years, if you can solve it and you have the time, that is perfect practice provided, all your topics are thoroughly done. So that is something from my side for you to make sure that uh, you are all set for the exam and uh, you can ace this particular paper in a very, very wonderful way. Take care.